Hello everyone, welcome to my first Marvel Snap deck guide. And today we'll be covering a deck which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, at least some kind of iteration of it. You've either seen it when you've played on, uh, when you've queued in the game, or you've probably seen other people play it. It is a fairly common deck, but I thought today I'd bring you a deck guide. And I'll try to break it up into three categories, so a very budget-friendly version, um, a more intermediate version when you get more cards, and then a more... I don't want to say advanced because I'm not that far in the game. I'm only in a collection level like 1,600, but one that, you know, progress, you can you, you can progress towards or build towards once you start unlocking some of the pool three cards. So I'm going to start off by explaining what the deck basically does and let's start off with the cheapest version. This is the most budget version I could make. Um, so what we have here is basically a lot of cards have come from series one. I uh, will pull one so that the deck is going to be quite... You can build this relatively early on. Obviously, a key card you're going to need is Devil Dinosaur. But other than that, you can kind of change almost any card in this deck. If you don't have it, you can change out things like Moon Girl. You can change... Although, Moon Girl is very useful in this deck. Um, but you can pretty much change any card here for the most part. So, um, this is going to be the most budget-friendly version of the deck that you can have. So, how the deck basically works is this card is going to be the main source of this deck's points. Devil Dinosaur, very, very good card. It is going to have an ability where for every card in your hand, this card is going to gain two power. Now, this deck is going to very easily have cards in the hand. Why? Because things like Cable is going to put the bottom card of your opponent's deck into your hand. So, you're going to end up having your opponent's card in your hand. Um, then you're going to have Sentinel. When you add, when you play this card, it's going to add another Sentinel to your hand. Um, Moon Girl is going to duplicate your entire hand, which is very good because if Devil Dinosaur is in your hand, it can copy Devil Dinosaur as well. And you can have two of them, which is great. So as you can see, this deck is very often going to have a lot of cards in hand, which means Devil Dinosaur is very often going to play for like 15 um, or more points. And you can potentially play two of them, which is very, very powerful. So one thing to keep in mind that the maximum hand limit you can have is seven cards in your hand. If you don't, if, if you have seven cards um, in your hand, you won't draw any more cards and you won't be able to fit any more cards. So when you play Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur has to be on the left side of your hand, generally in the first three spots. Otherwise, it won't copy Devil Dinosaur because there'll be too many cards in your hand. Just keep that in mind. Um, that's very, very important. Otherwise, this deck is going to be pretty simple. Um, you're going to be playing Ant-Man, and you're going to be playing Captain America, and you're going to be focusing on one lane. Then you're going to, when you can, you're going to play Moon Girl, potentially, to, on turn four, when you have four energy. And you're going to use it to potentially copy Devil Dinosaur. And then on turn five and turn six, you're going to play the two dinosaurs. Um, and then you have Namor for the, the other row, the row that you're not playing in. This is going to be a 10-point card for four cost, which is not bad, just force your opponent to invest a bit more into that road just to overcome the score of Namor and then you can focus on the other two lanes with your dinosaurs as well as um, things like your early cards like Ant-Man as well as things like obviously Captain America and just ensure you win two lanes that's what this game is all about is winning two lanes you can also use Claw to try help support Namor if you think your opponent can overcome those 10 points you can always play Claw next to it and then put some more points on the row with Namor so what Claw does is of course the location to the right has plus six power so that's going to be how this deck is going to essentially work um um, we can quickly get into a game using that deck just to show you guys i'm going to play a game from each deck so a budget deck let's get into a quick game play the budget deck and then we can play a more the, the intermediate deck and the advanced deck now again i'm going to be a higher collection level so it's going to be a bit harder for me to win now because i'm playing a very budget deck at a higher level but whatever you guys will get the general game plan by watching it so look at our opening hand we do have namor so we're going to use that to try contest um i'll unutilize rose so to speak and for now we don't have anything to play on turn one so i'm going to play sentinel with turn two with two energy i'm going to put on xander since cards you get plus one power and then i think on turn three i might play the nightcrawler and sentinel or something else if i draw something else to play here um citadel is quite nice it doubles the ongoing effects and this does have ongoing which is nice we did draw cable i'm going to play the cable here and see what our opponent is up to um draw some cards from their deck and see what they're going on about looks like cable is going to be stealing what exactly killmonger okay so we don't have to worry about our ones dying um wave is gonna make everything cost four for this next turn sure does anything get a benefit from that claw does get a bit of a benefit from it so i might just actually go ahead and play a claw here um i can't play claw on the left lane because i need that for my namor so i'm gonna go ahead and play claw here and then i might just drop a namor into the left lane and finish off with devil dinosaur into citadel so he goes ahead and he plays death that's quite a lot of points actually 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and drop Namor here. And while I'm at it, I might also just go ahead and drop my um, Ant-Man here. Because it's a full row, which means Ant-Man is going to put a lot of value on that. So it looks like our Ant-Man is getting some good value. Our Namor is getting some... Okay, so he pulls Ant-Man into the Namor range. That's actually quite bad for me. I wasn't expecting that. Um, Arrow being quite impactful there. Um, last turn for me, I'm going to go ahead and play Dinosaur. That arrow might actually win in the game. But I'm going to put Dinosaur on Onslaught Citadel because it's going to double the value of um, the Dinosaur here. Hopefully, he doesn't contest mid-row too much. Um, maybe I should have moved Nightcrawler. Oh, he goes in and plays leader. That's going to be pretty bad for me. So he's also going to get a Dinosaur here of his own, which is kind of scary. But looks like he will end up coming on top. Anyway, we do end up losing this one. But like I said, this is a very budget-heavy deck at a relatively higher level. But at, at, at whatever stage you end up playing this deck, it should perform a lot better considering your opponent, when I'm playing against opponents with as advanced cards as this. Then moving on to the next version, we're going to go ahead and look at the Dino. Um, this is going to have this. You can play this one when you have more pull two cards um, or series two cards, should I say, as this one is going to have a lot more of those. So the big, biggest differences between this deck is you're going to have things like you're going to have like a bit of a self-destroy package. You're going to have Bucky, which when Bucky's destroyed, it's going to spawn Winter Soldier, which is a six point card. Then we're also going to have Carnage, who can help kill your Bucky with it. You're also going to have Deathlock to help kill your Bucky. Deathlock destroys all cards on this location, so be careful with Deathlock. You only want to play this card either on an open row or a row where you want to kill something of your own, like Bucky or maybe Nova. Same with Carnage. You don't want to be killing too many things with Carnage. Carnage just want to use to kill, kill Bucky and Nova, typically. And this deck also has a bit more control. So you have Killmonger, which can kill all one-cost cards including your opponents, which is nice for Nova because Nova, when this card is destroyed, it gives all of your own cards plus one power. So um, you don't mind this dying to your own Killmonger. And then this deck also has things like, I believe we have, oh, we don't actually have, um, uh, we don't have Shang-Chi, but you can put Shang-Chi in the deck. Shang-Chi does um, help this deck quite a bit sometimes. You can put Shang-Chi instead of perhaps like a Lizard or... Um, yeah, you could, put a, you could take out Lizard and put a Shang-Chi in. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and just do that. Take out Lizard, put in Shang-Chi. And um, what Shang-Chi does is destroy all enemy cards at that at this location. They have nine or more power on your opponents, by the way. So you can use to kill any like of your opponent's dinosaurs. Because dinosaur is relatively common. A nice thing about Killmonger as well. at this When you get to this level, you're going to see a lot of Kazoo decks or decks with Kazar, which have a lot of one power units. And Killmonger is very nice against them. The reason I'm playing American Chavez is because it basically makes it you only draw this card on your turn six, which means... The early stage of the game, you're more likely to draw your things like Di Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl. So it just gives you a bit more consistency. That's why we're playing. Not very important this deck, just makes the deck a bit more consistent. And um, other than that, it's still going to function the same. We also have White Queen now. White Queen is a very nice card because it draws you the highest cost card of your opponent's hand, which means you get insight into what your opponent's playing and you also will end up getting a nice card from your opponent too and it also gives you an extra card in your hand for devil dinosaur otherwise the strategy is still the same if you have moon girl you can copy a devil dinosaur and potentially play two of them which is very nice anyway let's go ahead and try this version um again this is going to be a more budget heavy deck at a at a higher level higher so it is still going to be a little bit at a disadvantage for me to play but for you guys it'll obviously perform a lot better because at whatever level you're probably watching this video at it will do a lot or work a lot better for you so we do have the bucky and the death lock which is nice so on turn two i'm probably going to end up just go ahead and playing the bucky we also do have nova which is nice we could potentially play nova and bucky although i'm not sure if i have the provision or not the provision the um, energy curve for it we'll have to see so gonna go ahead and start with the bucky and then we're probably going to end up playing something like a maybe nova or just go straight with deathlock and ignore nova entirely it's not important we play the nova to be to be honest so we'll see we also have moon girl in the hand which is nice if we can draw devil dinosaur although right now it's not looking all that likely for the dinosaur um opponent plays a colossus sure down comes Bucky here, and it looks like <clears throat> location is kind of interesting. So, um, honestly, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play. I'm going to ignore the... We don't have Diet Source, so we're just going to rather get more value off on this. Oh, he has armor. That's not great. So he armors this up, which means I can not no, I can no longer kill this, which is pretty bad for me, not going to lie. Um, that is going to be unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead, though, and play... I guess Deathlock here. Yeah. Or I could actually put Deathlock here. Yeah. Hopefully take this lane. Maybe I can still take it. It's somewhat unlikely, but let's see. If I can take this, it'll be pretty big. Um, still haven't drawn a dinosaur, which is kind of bad. Hopefully we can still get it. Would have been nice to have the Devil Dinosaur early with the Moon Girl, but 
Unfortunately, we don't have it. Although, at least we get to take this lane, which is nice. So, Deathlock will still ensure we take... Oh, we find the dinosaur, which is very nice. So, for now then, I guess I'm going to go ahead and play maybe these two cards. And then we can... They will obviously draw us more cards too, which is great for dinosaur. Maybe use dinosaur to take the Hellfire Club, potentially. Or if you want to put some more pressure on this lane, we can also... Oh, okay. So, he plays press X. So, he takes mid lane. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and then just play the devil dinosaur puts a lot of points here we've already secured kylan or kai kylan kind of i'm not sure what the pronunciation is anyway play the devil dinosaur here and let's see if he can get enough points i don't think he can it's very likely we'll end up winning here oh he plays spectrum now okay that's never mind he then takes this and this but um yeah that's basically how it will function at this stage unfortunately our opponent did play the armor there so what was supposed to happen here is deathlock was supposed to kill bucky turn to winter soldier nova was supposed to give us plus one everything luckily for our opponent he had the armor there to counter that um otherwise we would have if we drew the dinosaur earlier we could have played moon girl to copy the dinosaur and had two of them but unfortunately we were not able to do that but anyway that's just generally how this deck is going to perform not really focused on winning or losing here i kind of just want to show you guys gameplay so you know how the decks work all right and the final version of this deck or the the version which i've been currently playing myself and this is where i think what you want to try work towards as you unlock the cards there are a lot of cards here from series three so it'll take a little bit longer to unlock all these cards um zabu obviously being one of the more difficult ones to get because it is going to be required from the battle pass to get it or you have to wait till series five which is going to take a while but if you do have the battle pass you will have access to zabu but basically how this deck is going to work is uh so the, as you can see there's a lot of four cost cards what zabu does your four cost cards are going to cost two less so things like jessica jones shang chi spider-man white queen all going to cost a lot cheaper which means you can play a lot more of them which is very nice we also have a lot more applications for moon girl because we can play moon girl to either copy devil dinosaur or we can use moon girl to copy spider-man now it's very nice if you copy spider-man is you can play zabu on turn three then on turn four you can play moon girl where you can copy two spider-mans potentially and then on turn five you can play spider-man in two lanes which means your opponent can no longer play on the opposite lane on turn six because this card puts some webs on the opponent's side of the board which means on the turn after they will not be able to play on those lanes which means your opponent will be only able to play on one remaining lane which means you'll be free to take those two lanes with a dinosaur or whatever else you might want and therefore give you a very easy win um very important to note you must always snap before you play your spider-man if you think your spider-man is going to win you the game because if your opponent sees a spider-man and they think they're going to lose they're just going to forfeit every time so if you want to get that extra cube out remember to try and snap before they see you, you reveal the spider-man or at the especially of two spines if you're going to play double spider-man it's a very high probability you'll win the game and then you really should be snapping before your opponent gets a, gets an understanding of what you're about to do we also play things like error which is just a very good value card move all cards played on this turn to this location uh, obviously if you're securing two lanes you can play this in, a, in an already losing lane and force your opponent's final turn to be wasted potentially by moving all those cards they played into the lane with arrow or arrow whatever um, other than that, we also play the Quinjet, which is going to be a little bit different because what Quinjet does <clears throat> is we are going to be using this to um, ensure that cards that wins in our starting deck will cost one less. And obviously, Sentinel is creating extra copies in our hand. Those are all going to cost one less. Um, things like Moon Girl are also going to be creating or duplicating our hand, which means all those cards will be costing one less. And things like White Queen will also be creating your opponent's card, which means that will cost one less as well. Um, other than that, we're also playing Colossus. This is just for the location that currently the, the new featured location, Rickety Bridge. This card is not affected by it. That's the only reason I'm playing this. It's just a tech card for that. Otherwise, you can take this out, replace with something like Asian 13 perhaps, and use that for um, value with Quinjet. But other than that, this deck is going to function relatively the same as how we've seen all the others as we can play at this pool three version this version should be functioning a lot better especially at this level this one will be a lot more competitive but um yeah you'll have to work towards this again you don't need you don't need every single card of this deck sometimes you might just this just gives you a kind of like final destination of where to work towards as you build up your collection this is kind of what you want to try get towards at the end so looking at opening hand we have zab which is very nice to have early on um turn two we could just play colossus now there's a good chance this location will end up being um will end up being potentially rickety bridge so i'm just going to play this here because i think this could end up being rickety bridge there's actually a 40 percent chance that will be rickety bridge um and then turn three obviously we'll play zabu we're going to lose our hand though because of this which is kind of annoying but at least we have the zabu before our hand is lost um we also have sentinel with the quinjet which is good although we're going to end up losing that if, i guess so let's see what this is looks like it's not rickety bridge so go ahead and play the Zabu. We're going to lose our hand here, but that's fine. 
At least we got our Zabu down. Let's see what the game gives us instead of this hand. Zab is, of course, going to make all our four-cost cards a lot cheaper, which is nice. And um, let's take a look and see what happens here. Down comes the Invisible Woman. Interesting. Still have our Devil Dinosaur. Oh, we also have Moongul. That's great. So now what we can do is we can play the Moongul. Um, we can duplicate... Oh, we also have Spider-Man too. I actually might want to copy Spider-Man instead. Sp copying Spider-Man is huge. So I'm going to go ahead and snap now. I think this is a really good position to be in. I'm going to take the snap on this. And our opponent's already retreated. He's had enough. He he kind of, I guess, might know what's coming. Or he just doesn't like the new hand he got. But basically what would have happened here is we would have played Moon Girl. We would have copied this hand. We would have had two Spider-Mans. And then we would have played double Spider-Man here. And then our opponent wouldn't be able to play on two lanes. And then we could just take it with a Devil Dinosaur and ensure that our opponents can't put any points on the board there. So that's basically how this final version will end up doing. It is going to be, obviously, a lot stronger than the um, the other versions we were, we were discussing. But that's basically it. This is how the Devil Dinosaur deck is going to function. It is going to be a, like I said, a relatively strong deck, especially for new players. It's also not bad. Even as you advance further on, this deck still holds its own even in the later stage of the game, but otherwise it is going to be a pretty solid deck, which you guys can try out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide. Um, I'll be making more of these as I unlock more cards. Obviously, I'm still trying to unlock some cards to give you guys some more content on that regard, but it's going to take some time to get there. But for now, this is the this is one of the better decks I've played, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, take care, everyone, and bye-bye.